Welcome to AQMD On The Air. I'm your host, Philip Crabb. Joining us today is Dr. Matt Miyasato, Assistant Deputy Executive Officer for AQMD's Science and Technology Advancement Office. In this role, Dr. Miyasato leads the groups responsible for research, development, demonstration, and deployment of clean, advanced technologies for both mobile and stationary sources of pollution. Dr. Miyasato will be talking to us today about a coordinated approach to air pollution, energy, mobility, climate, and economic growth in Southern California and the public dialogue taking place around that effort. Dr. Musato, thank you for joining us. My pleasure, Philip. Sure. As Southern California recovers from recession, it also faces the daunting challenge of meeting federal air quality standards by its federal attainment deadlines, including 2023 for ozone and 2014 for PM 2.5. What is AQMD doing to stimulate a more active dialogue about how to bring positive change? Well, Philip, you hit on a great point here, is that the South Coast region, we suffer from the worst air quality in the nation. Uh, as you know, and many of our uh, viewers know, is that uh, over 40 percent of the state's population resides in our basin, and yet we have over uh, 100 days that we don't meet the federal standards. And remember, the federal standards were established to protect public health. And so that being said, there's a, there's a large number of days that's affecting a large number of uh, people in our region that are uh, experiencing unhealthy air. Uh, and so our mission really is to clean up the air in time to meet the federal standards. And we're doing that by trying to be collaborative. We're going out and we're making presentations, we're talking to local groups, we're talking to the state and the federal government to help bring focus back onto our region such that we can work collaboratively to meet those federal uh, deadlines. How are these presentations shaping the debate about the future for energy and transportation in Southern California? Well, Philip, as you know, as a public agency, our uh, main goal is to ensure that we're completely transparent in our process and our decision-making efforts. Uh, and so our mission, uh, critical mission, is to go out and educate and outreach to the public and the stakeholders about what the problem is, how we define the problem, and then come up with solutions that we think could work collaboratively. And then we vet them with our stakeholders. Does it make sense in terms of uh, technical feasibility as well as political feasibility? Uh, and so rather than just shaping the debate, I think the, the biggest success is that we're initiating that dialogue and we're having that debate. Can you give us an overview for this new vision for Southern California? Well, for the vision really isn't a new one. The vision has always been clean air every day for everybody that lives in and uh, works in our region. Uh, but the implementation of that vision has changed and there's an urgency to that because of the federal deadlines that you have just uh, mentioned. Um, what we have to come to realize and to bring all of our stakeholders along with us is that uh, clean air is not an infinite natural resource. It's actually a very limited natural resource. And every time that we turn on our, our car, we take the bus, uh, we are putting emissions into the air that are harmful. Uh, and so we have to come to that realization and then uh, attack the problem by changing the way we make those decisions. For example, we can choose to drive cleaner vehicles. Uh, we can choose to pay more for clean technologies. Uh, and we need to have the technology solutions as well as the uh, societal uh, will to put these into place. Um, and so we've been pushing for uh, near zero and zero emission technologies in many different uh, sectors. It turns out that most of the emissions come from mobile sources in our, in our air basin. So that's about 90% of the problem is dealing with mobile sources. And so we're looking at how to clean those up by applying near zero and zero emission technologies. What other agencies are working together with AQMD to make this happen? It's a great question. We've been trying to partner and are partnering, in fact, with uh, local municipalities, those who would be the end users, uh, businesses that could be uh, taking advantage of these technologies, as well as technology implementers who might develop the technology and have uh, economic growth within our region, but also our colleagues at the state and the federal government. These uh, problems that we're dealing with are not just local or regional problems. These are problems that uh, span the gamut from uh, interstate commerce, uh, they also span the gamut from regional and statewide air quality needs as well as greenhouse gas emission needs. And so uh, everything that happens in our region, in the South Coast Basin, is going to happen at the state and then the national level. And so we're really at the forefront. Dr. Miyasato, why are collaborative solutions so important? Well, as I mentioned, um, well, there's a saying, many hands make light work. Uh, we all have to engage because this is a problem, as I mentioned, is not just a local problem or a regional problem. It has uh, effects that go beyond our borders, uh, the state border and even the national level, because uh, we're talking about technologies uh, and uh, solutions that have implications uh, for many different parts of the world. So let's take goods movement for an example. Uh, taking containers off of marine vessels, putting them onto uh, a truck that then goes to a warehouse in San Bernardino that gets on to a train that goes off 
uh, into Chicago. So you can see that there's a lot of moving parts here. Uh, they're putting out emissions into our region, uh, but it has interstate commerce uh, effects as well as uh, delivering that plasma TV to someone in Chicago. Uh, and so it's not just a local uh, region, regional or state issue. It's a national issue, and we think the, the federal government, the state government, uh, and perhaps even technology providers worldwide should be helping us to achieve these types of uh, technology goals. Technological innovation will be a fundamental factor in transforming Southern California in the coming decades. What are some areas that we need to focus that innovation? Well, one of the key areas that we are very concerned about is the transport of goods throughout our region. So we have the two ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach within the South Coast Basin. Uh, and combined, that's the sixth largest cargo gateway in the world. So that's a lot of containers coming over from Asia and other parts of the world <clears throat> being transported through our local communities, putting on uh, trains and trucks that then travel through our basin, uh, but also disproportionately impacting those communities with those emissions. Uh, so we're very concerned about the transport of goods and if we can do it cleanly. So that is going to be one of the major focus areas that we'd like to uh, exert a great amount of effort, especially this year. So we've been undertaking a couple big priority projects uh, for the agency. One is uh, called the Zero Emission Container Movement System. So we're looking at electrifying uh, rail uh, with the new advanced technologies such as linear synchronous motors. Uh, as well as electrifying trucks. So it could be a truck on a catenary, it could be a hybrid truck that has all electric range. Uh, and so looking at very different modes of applying technologies that could be used in other applications uh, but uh, to the goods movement sector. Um, uh, there's also the potential for electrifying ships, for example, with shore power. So when they're at dock, instead of hoteling and, and uh, burning their engines to run electricity for that ship, you plug them in with these gigantic plugs uh, and you have to put the, the uh, power onto the dock. Um, electrified gantry canes. So there's, there's lots of potential for electrification or even fuel cells uh, for running these types of applications. Uh, but that brings into the question was where do you get this power? And so we've been uh, very active in looking for distributed generation and that's where you uh, produce energy where you're going to use it. Uh, and we are looking not only at distributing the energy to where the locations may be that are going to draw that power, but doing it renewably. So photovoltaics is a good example. You put those on top of a warehouse and then you could potentially support battery electric trucks out of that warehouse. Uh, or you can run a fuel cell. So a fuel cell is an electric chemical device that takes hydrogen uh, and turns it into electricity. So it's really an electric vehicle. Uh, but if you can take, instead of uh, using natural gas and converting it to hydrogen for the fuel cell, let's say you use biogas, like a dairy digester gas or some other renewable feedstock, and then you can do it renewably. So um, we're looking at all those sides of the, the puzzle. A lot of moving pieces, but we think there's uh, good opportunities in many of those different technology areas. Dr. Misato, how do we get from here to there? Are there other issues like funding that need to be discussed? Well, it's a great question, Philip. Um, we're already working on how do we get from here to there and have been for over 20 years through our technology advancement office. Uh, and we've adopted a strategy of looking at a portfolio of technology options, uh, some of which may bear fruit, uh, many of which we hope will bear fruit, but some which, uh, which may not. Uh, but we have to look at a very uh, a variety of different options because, there's a, to be honest, there's a lot of different applications and no one silver bullet is going to do it. And so we're looking at that portfolio of options. Um, the second question, are there uh, funding issues? Well, definitely there are funding issues. Um, we uh, are trying to leverage our, our sister agencies at the state and federal, uh, federal level to help us fund some of these technology uh, projects because, as I mentioned, we think there's a broad uh, application not only here in the Southern uh, California region but at the state level as well as the federal level. And so we rightly believe that they should be helping us with the funding. Um, but perhaps the, the more important question and issue is after we develop the technology, after we show that it's viable, we need to implement it and we need to deploy it. And so incentive funding needs to be there to ensure that the typically higher differential cost for new technologies, we see that with, uh, we saw it with hybrid cars, right? We see it with uh, the new battery electric vehicles, the Chevy Volt, the Nissan Leaf. Uh, they're actually a little bit more expensive than your conventional vehicle. Uh, and so in order to get people to use those, deploy those, we're going to need some incentive funding. But also critical is that we need policies implemented uh, to incentivize it not only with uh, a financial incentive perhaps, but a behavioral incentive. Give them HOV lane access, give them free parking. Uh, so incentivizing clean technologies with uh, money and also with some, uh, some behavioral uh, attributes. How is AQMD involving stakeholders to work through these issues? 
Well, one great instrument that we've been using is called the Air Quality Institute. Uh, and that's essentially one-day workshops that we've been going out to different parts of the community. And we explain to them, here is the grave uh, challenge that we're facing in terms of air quality. And then we collectively brainstorm on how we might collaboratively come to some solutions. And we've done these air quality institutes not only locally in the communities here in Southern California, but we've gone to other states and even in Washington, D.C., uh, to show that uh, let's, let's all work together because, as I've mentioned uh, several times, these have not only regional but statewide and also federal impacts. Given the fast approaching federal deadlines, AQMD was working with a sense of urgency to make this vision a reality. How is AQMD involving the public in getting the word out to talk about this issue? A great instrument that we have out is called uh, Powering the Future. It's a, uh, it's a nice document that was uh, originally authored by South Coast AQMD, the California Air Resources Board, and the Southern California Association of Governments. And so all three of us have to work hand in hand in order to uh, develop a plan that would be accepted by the federal government to attain our, our federal, uh, to attain the federal standards. And so it's a natural partnership for us to be working together on what's our vision. Uh, and in that document, we describe what the severe air quality challenges that we face, uh, what the health effects could be, uh, and what the major sources of those air pollution uh, sectors are in terms of putting out uh, copious amounts of emissions. Uh, and then we offered some solutions or potential solutions for, for example, electrifying rail, electric trucks. So near zero and zero emission technologies that could be brought to bear to help us address that problem. Uh, and if the public is interested, uh, which they should be, uh, we invite them to download that document. It's called Powering the Future from our website. It's www.aqmd.gov. And should they have any thoughts or would like to contribute to our thinking in the process, uh, they are welcome to provide comments under Powering the Future at aqmd.gov. Dr. Matt Miyasato, Assistant Deputy Executive Officer for AQMD's Science and Technology Advancement Office. Thank you for joining us and sharing your vision and AQMD's vision for clean energy, clear skies, and a growing economy for Southern California. Thanks, thanks again. My pleasure. Thanks, right. Philip. And that's our show. Thank you for watching AQMD on the air. Visit cleanairconnections.org to find out how you can help us clean the air that we breathe. Let's work together.